the privilege of uh, beginning tonight by giving you an overview of this Texas-sized rampage that we have had before the Board of Education in our state launched by the evolutionist forces whom we'll be talking a little bit more about in a moment. I am known also when I teach for teaching with alliteration and so I don't want to disappoint any of my old fans or students and not have alliteration tonight. So I'm going to do I covered three topics, which will make it sound like a sermon, and they usually come out that way for me. The three words are an issue. What is really the issue in all of this controversy, central to the controversy? Number two, and this is where we will spend most of our time, what are the implications of this issue, particularly the teaching of revolutionism only in the public schools? These are the kinds of things that are not examined even before the State Board of Education. And number three, incidents, that is events. What incidents led up to, surrounded, and have occurred since the Board of Education's decision, which was a week ago yesterday on March the 27th. So first of all, the issue with which we can deal very quickly. You get right down to the bottom line, the issue is how are we going to teach evolution in the science classrooms of the state of Texas? The evolutionist, led by the ever-present uh, American Civil Liberties Union and their Texas twin, the Texas Freedom Network, wanted to remove from existing Texas public education law the statement that students must examine the strengths and weaknesses of scientific hypotheses and theories, etc. That's Armstrong's condensation of something very long, and usually I make it longer rather than shorter. So, but this is a short version. So it was the strengths and weaknesses clause of current policy that was at issue. What happened was that not only did the evolutionists lose, but language uh, was inserted and the policy was rewritten so that, as far as most of us can tell, we actually came out better than we were before, which of course is a testimony to the way the Lord works in these things. And if we ever saw uh, answered prayer, it was certainly in this situation. That's the issue. Now, the implications of teaching evolution only. I want to talk about the implications in three dimensions. There is a philosophical dimension, there is a constitutional dimension, there is a theological religious dimension. Those are at least the three major dimensions with which I'll deal. And of course, I can do a course on any of these, but I'll, I'll try to run through these briefly. And I want to start with the philosophical dimension of teaching evolutionism only. Evolution in, Dar in the Darwinian form, which is what we're talking about, of course says that man is basically an animal. He's a higher form of animal. He's quantitatively superior to a dog or a cat, and we have a dog and love her dearly, but uh, at least hopefully we are superior most of the time. She's not very well behaved. Um, I think Jerry might say his wife, the same thing about his wife, and probably be right most of the time. But uh, he's kind enough not to say that, or maybe he's safe enough not to say that, smart enough. Um, but the issue is then the issue of personhood. We've got a, a philosophical issue, what is the nature of man? And of course evolutionism is saying man is an animal. Now that has immeasurable implications. If you look at Webster, just a simple a current issue of Webster, Collegiate Dictionary, here's, I, I just looked it up, several things. Here's what Webster says, a person is a human being, a man, a woman, or child, as distinguished from an animal or thing. Isn't that interesting? Apparently the evolutionists don't even read the dictionary. Uh, why? But then they don't read a lot of other things too, and I can tell you more stories about that, but with great restraint we'll um, uh, withhold that until a later time. Now that is terribly significant in many ways, but to just give you one illustration, if man is an animal, not a person, then we have society collapses. Because again, if you look, and I'm just reading from the actual quotes, if you look at Webster, a society is an organized group of persons associated together for a variety of purposes. A body of individual human beings or persons living together as members of the community. So if man is what the, uh, the evolutionists hypothesize, then the concept of society totally collapses. And with it go all kinds of other consequences uh, for uh, civilization as we know it. Now, uh, of course, 
we can bring in here very easily the issue of abortion. Um, there are so many ties that I, uh, again, have to, with great uh, restraint, refrain from going into that. But I do want to note that um, the Supreme Court in the infamous Roe versus Wade said the unborn is not a person. Well, if the unborn is not a person, according to Webster, you're a person, an animal, or a thing, so what does that make the unborn child? He's alive, so he can't be a thing, he has to be an animal. And of course, you therefore have the symbiotic relationship, a, a strong mutual interrelationship, an interdependent relationship between abortions, abortion and evolutionism. 